Okay, um, so now, <clears throat> now we're going to look into uh, how to input data into these components <clears throat> and essentially go over how sliders work. Um, so what we've got right now is this um, set point that has a, a certain x and y dimension that we input by hand. And what we want to do is we want to actually feed that in um, numerically using this slider that's going to allow us to manipulate it in a more sort of active way. Um, and so what this slider does is it um, it essentially provides a wire that can be fed into the various points of the component. So here, um, when I feed it into the x direction, um, I can actually start to change the overall width of that of that box or of that um, plane. And then what I can do is I can copy and paste by doing Control C and Control V, and then I can feed that into the Y. So that now I can um, essentially manipulate the overall width and height of this in a more interactive way. <coughs> Excuse me. So um, what we can do here now is um, go in and change these sliders. So we can change the type from floating point, which has decimals, to integers. We can do that on both of these. And then we can change the range. Um, by going under values and changing, say, the upper limit to like 100. So now we can make this much bigger. I'm gonna, just going to switch completely to perspective here. And what I'm also going to do is just drop the grid, going under grid, and then switch to a rendered view. So this shows you that kind of control. But keep in mind that everything here is in inches. Um, and so it's it's at a slightly different scale than we want to be working at. So maybe the easiest way is to introduce a multiplier, um, which is going to change 34 inches into 34 feet. What we can do is disconnect this slider by going to disconnect and disconnect. And then we can introduce something under this scalar menu. Um, it's essentially a multiplier drop that onto the canvas. And so this multiplier, again, it's got inputs on the left and then an output on the right. And the input on the left, the first number will feed in the slider. And then the second number will input by hand. We'll call that 12. So that will essentially translate those inches into feet. And then we'll copy and paste that. Disconnect it. And feed it in like that. So now, when we slide this out, we know that we've got a facade 80 feet long by 40 feet high. The next step in this is to um, come up with a technique for subdividing this facade into a kind of modular approach or a kind of gridded system. And um, it's a two-step process. What we can do is um, start off, you still staying within the scalar menu, um, we can go to the interval command, and there's this tool called divide interval. And what it's looking for is it needs three inputs. It needs a base interval, um, and then a number of segments in both the U and the V direction, which are the kind of rhino equivalent of X and Y. So the base interval is going to be the plane that we've got. And then here we can input by hand, or we can use a slider bar for the U and V um, numbers. And let's do another slider just by copying it and pasting it. We'll copy and paste that. So now we've got two of those that get fed in. <coughs> and nothing, nothing visualizes yet. We need to um, we need to do one more step to get that to happen. And that's to go over to the surface menu. And then um, to do what's called the isotrim command, which is this one right here. And what this is looking for is it needs a surface, a base surface, and then it needs a domain. And so what we've got here in the plane is our base surface. And then what we did with the divide command is establish a domain. So we can link these two together. 
And that what you'll see is that a grid suddenly appears on the surface. Um, and right now it's moving a little slow because um, the really high numbers produce a lot of subdivisions. So what we'll do is we'll adjust the values down. We'll say we'll go with like a 20 max for the upper limit on both of these. And then you can see that there's some kind of like overlapping. It looks like there's two surfaces, and that's because there's this surface, and then there's this surface, one on top of the other. So what I'll do is I'll take the preview off of the first one so that we've got that. Um, so this is what this is going to do. Essentially what we've done is um, we've introduced sliders that are going to allow us to change the number of subdivisions within that surface as well as change its overall dimension. And you can see that um, it recalculates the subdivisions when the overall dimension of the surface changes. And here it's just worth pointing out that keep in mind that none of this stuff, although it's being visualized within the Rhino space, it's not exactly a Rhino object yet. Everything is still a grasshopper object, which means it's in this kind of parallel world. Um, so this will be the end of the second part. Um, and then what we'll do in this third part is uh, show a quick technique for animating this um, using a kind of digital flipbook.